You join me here today on the outskirts of Shanghai and we're only about 20 minutes from the glittering towers of the financial center and we're here in the rice fields and we're here to see this brand and this car. This of course is MG and they've had a really good few years in Europe. They've introduced some really affordable practical models that everyone loves and this is their latest one. So we're going to find out can they keep up their EV assault on Europe as they start to go a bit more upmarket? Let's find out. This is the Marvel R, and this is fully charged. Don't forget to subscribe and enter to be in the chance to win in our great EV giveaway, where you could win one of four electric cars. So the first difference you'll notice is that this doesn't have an MG badge. Obviously the European one will. This is the SAIC, the wrong way, the row, the R, as they like to call themselves, Marvel R. Um, now you'll notice the first thing is that the design language of this is a lot more grown up, a lot more luxurious. And this is the di design direction that MG are taking uh, over the coming years. And you'll see this on a lot more models um, uh, soon. Now, this has actually been released in China for a few months already. It came out this year. It's going to be released in Europe, I think, later this year as well. Now, in the front seat here, hey, the driving seat, whoops, um, it's actually a very, very good place to be. There's a lot of feeling of room in here, um, and the layout and everything is fitted kind of just makes sense. It's very simple it's not too fussy it's not too complicated i really like how they've kind of hidden the air conditioning under here again it's got this red stitching which makes it look really smart as well a couple of annoyances in here the first is the speed so the speed is actually in the corner of the um the dial here and when you're turning corner you can't actually see the speed so when i was coming down here i was going around a quite a long corner couldn't see what speed i was doing that's slightly frustrating here, the angle of this, this screen is, is slightly odd. So if you're sitting here, the, the rakish angle of this just a little bit annoying. I think I just have to get used to it. You know, I've, I'm used to my Xiaopeng G3, which is quite flat over here and actually facing me. This is kind of, maybe it's to be used by the passenger as well. Again, that feeling of space in here as well. I've got all the skylight features. I've got cameras in here to, to tell me if it's actually me driving, it will just for, for, for my settings. Lots of metal buttons on here. And the really neat feature is this is dial down here. I really like how they do these dials. It's very chunky and it feels good when you turn it. And it's very easy to do without actually looking at it. So some good features, some annoyances in here. Definitely not a perfect interior. SAIC really know what they're doing when it comes to hybrid and electric cars. They've been building them for, for over 10 years and all of that, you can see that coming out in, in fruition in this car. So this is not a light car, it's about 1900 kilos. It's pretty big, but it is an SUV and it's got a 70 kilowatt hour battery, so it's to be expected. Um, interestingly, this actually has quite a quick top speed. It's got uh, zero to 100 in 4.9 seconds um, and it has an all-wheel drive tri-motor system, so three motors in this, which helps propel that large mass to a, a quite high top speed of 200 kilometers an hour. Not that you're ever, ever gonna do that, and you're gonna burn through the range pretty quickly. No, and I'd say the range is pretty accurate. Um, we're at 462 kilometers on here. Obviously, this is tied to the NEDC range, so it's slightly different uh, to the WLTP range. So let's start off with the design. This looks fantastic in person. Um, it's got these X shape on the front. It's got these daytime LED running lights. And of course, it's got the customary LED light bar along the front. That obviously is the design language for all electric cars now, which says, I am an electric car. 
Underneath here, you've got a frunk of 150 litres. So quite practical because you actually do need that space because the back actually isn't that big. Now, if you come round to the side, you've got a few more nice kind of premium and luxury features. You've got this nice kind of uh, grill down here. Don't think it's very functional, but it's topped off by this lovely Marvel badge uh, and, and silver here. You can kind of see the uh, design language mirrored in the door mirrors as well. And of course, it's got to have flush door handles because it's luxury um, and it might help with the drag coefficient as well. So one thing I really like about this car is these shoulder lines. It kind of gives it this aggressive, like hunched over look as if it's ready to attack the road. Now, this has another couple of important functions. One of them is a V to L, so vehicle to load, which means you can plug in something like an electric bike or a laptop and run it off this car. Not quite as good as V to G, but it's the first step in that direction. The other important thing is it's got roof rails. Now, I haven't been told if these can actually hold anything. It would be great if they could, probably not as it's got a glass roof, but this car actually does have some really good features to make it practical. And we're gonna find out around the back just in a minute. Now, in terms of driving dynamics, it does feel a little bit floaty and it's not super responsive. So I can put my foot down. There's a slight delay before the car goes. So slight delay. Steering feels a little bit vague, um, but it's pretty uh, solid and planted on the road. And the best thing is it's super comfortable to drive and it, beep, it likes to beep at me. So let me just put that on mute. Oh, and again, the back seats. MG's thinking about that practicality again. Um, and there's a lot of leg room. You can comfortably get three adults in the back here on the back seat. Um, I've got that kind of like this leather feeling and a few mosquitoes. <laughs> and it's got like this velour-y and red stitching as well. Um, they've thought about the materials in here as well. So this is kind of like a, a metal finish here, which says Marvel in front of me. And I've got a lot of uh, space, a feeling of space in here. So massive, uh, skylight window which you've got open right now the other thing i've got is two bose speakers in this door and two in that door again thinking about what this environment will be like for for people traveling long distances in this car other important thing is the v2l um, plug will actually be down there i've seen it in some of the the photos this car doesn't have that functionality but that that is where it will be that's where the plug is for for v2l so around the back of the Marvel R, you'll see the design language is slightly different from the MGs in Europe. Now this is actually the like, kind of the Chinese design language which we've seen on the wrong way or the road cars over the past few years. Now this is a much more global design language and we're going to see it in a lot more MG uh, SAIC cars over the coming year. Now boot, boot space. Now the other MGs are well known for their kind of practicality and functionality. This one is a little bit of a downside. Now if I can actually find the, the button. So this has 357 litres of boot space, which isn't actually that much. So the camera guy's got all of his equipment in here and it's almost full. So the good thing is that you can fold down the back seats and you get 1,396 litres of boot space. So it does have some practicality, but that's why you've got that 150 litres of front space at the front of the car. Now, the most important thing about this is the towing capability. Yes, this car has towing capability. Obviously, the other MGs didn't but this one does, up to 750 kilograms. Unfortunately, we can't test that here in China because I think it's illegal for us to tow anything. So you guys in Europe are gonna have to test it and let us know how that actually works. So really, really good feature. And I'm glad MG are thinking about this to make it even more practical. When you're driving along, you do feel that it is quite a large car. It's actually quite wide. Um, I've seen myself go for the lines a few times, which, which isn't good, but you know, in Shanghai with everyone driving massive SUVs, it fits in quite well. Um, I would say that the biggest issue I have in here, again, is that screen, which is just a little bit inconvenient um, at that angle, and it feels quite close to me as well. It should just be a little bit further back. However, I do like the dial. Like I said earlier, this Twizzly dial down here makes things very, very easy. I've got all my self-driving modes down here, um, and it's actually quite a clear screen, and I've, but there's too much information on it for my liking. You know, I can, so all I need really is my speed, but unfortunately I've got everything on here, um, which is slightly annoying. So I think this car is important for two reasons. The first is that V2L capability and bringing that to the mass market. I think what MG are doing is genius and I hope they enhance that in the future to V to G and everything else. The other really important feature is the 
towing capability. People want practicality and this car delivers it. Now, although this is the luxurious version of um, the MG, this is gonna trickle down to the other models in the coming years. So that's what's so exciting. This really shows the future of MG and you guys in Europe are very lucky to get this later this year. Unfortunately for those in the UK, they're not planning to release this at the moment, but hopefully they will change their mind. So that's all we've got time for. I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as we have driving the Marvel R. We have YouTube membership, Patreon links all around this video. And if you have been, thank you for watching.